Rasani's murderer, Yanush Valus, has taken his bid for parole to the Constitutional Court. Valus has unsuccessfully tried to secure parole for years. The South African Communist Party and the Hani family continue to oppose parole. The matter is being heard virtually. We cross now to Aviwe Ntila. Aviwe, what's the latest there? I know that Yanush Valus has tried several times and uh, the Hani family, as you correctly say, have intervened at all those parole hearings and the SACP, and they're just absolutely anti his release. Certainly, Annika, the Hani family believes that he's not remorseful at all. We do understand that he has filed court papers last year, suggesting that he has turned over a new leaf. The Polish man saying that um, he is now, he now knows that the apartheid was wrong in its entirety. In fact, over the last nearly 30 years of incarceration, he's become closer to God. In fact, these are some of the issues that I want to touch on as we head to 10 o'clock, where, of course, the highest court in the land, the Constitutional Court, will be hearing this application. I want to talk to the first DSG of uh, the SACP, where you understand Chris Hani was the then Secretary General when he lost his life back on the 10th of April in 1993. You've heard what the Polish man had to say uh, in terms of sounding remorseful. Do you believe he's sincere? He is not sincere, and uh, he has demonstrated this throughout his uh, many applications, and all of them have, been, have failed because he couldn't tell the truth, nor become remorseful, nor even apologize to the family. I, and ultimately, as you know, his co-conspirator, uh, W. Lewis, did the same thing, was finally released on medical parole. Then he made a video indicating that he was not remorseful, he would repeat the same deed if he were given another chance, and said that must be distributed after his death, which was done basically to mock us as well as the Hani family. This is just unacceptable behavior. It's an abuse of the legal process. He says it's been 29 years now under incarceration. He believes that the justice system will not be fair to him and in fact he'll be in prison forever if he's not granted this application. Quickly, your thoughts on this. Nothing stops him uh, to spend his entire life in prison. Uh, we've got cases, we've presented different cases all over the world where uh, a, a lifetime is, is, is exactly what it is, particularly when you are, you are not remorseful uh, for what we have done. Because in this, in, in this instance, he has been trying to blackmail the family and the Communist Party as if we are the bad person when actually is the one who is the murderer. And he must take responsibility for his actions, and he has failed to do that over the years. He is now using peripheral questions so that he can garner public sympathy. But he must spend time uh, in jail, and, and because the family uh, has lost their, their breadwinner, their father, their uncle, uh, everything to them. We lost our general secretary. Uh, we will never recover him. He is still alive. He must be thankful for that, that uh, the death sentence was uh, removed after uh, 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 1994. And therefore, he, he has continued to have his life. The family doesn't have the, 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 their own uh, person. So it's, it's clear that uh, this abuse of the legal process uh, must just come to an end. We hope that the Constitutional Court will make a clear ruling on this regard. Okay, thank you very much. Constitutional Court uh, applications are to be heard at 10 a.m. this morning. Of course, the Hani family, the widow of Chris Hani, um, Madim Bohani, is inside, and we'll be chatting to her just after the application is heard. All right, thank you so much, uh, Viwe Mtile. We're going.